Hey you guys, we got something different. No muscle cars, but luxury cars. And here I've got a 76 Chrysler New Yorker and I've got a 1977 Lincoln Mark V. And we're gonna test them both in a Land Yacht Luxury Showdown. Head to head. Nick's Garage is supported by Atlas Equipment and K-Tool International. Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Manny. And welcome to Nick's Garage. Well, we've got something different today. It's a Sunday, everything's closed today, so we said let's do a little comparison on two different cars. But today, the cars in question are from a few years after the end of the muscle car era, for which Nick is known best. Today, Nick and Manny will be comparing a couple of Malaise era luxury barges from the mid 1970s. Okay, so we don't have a Cadillac from General Motors, but since we're here, I'm the Mopar guy, Manny's the, the Ford, Ford guy. guy, so we're going to talk a little bit about these cars. All right, we've got here a 1976 Chrysler New Yorker. It's equipped with a 440, of Ooh. course, an automatic transmission. Gotta love that. Hey, you go, of course. <laughs> and you know, I love these cars, and they're so smooth when you take them for a ride on the highway. You know, there's so much room inside, which uh, we're going to take it for a drive after. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It is a four door. They made roughly about uh, 30,000 units in the uh, uh, four door and about 10,000 units in the two door model. Came equipped with a 440. It's got 310 foot pounds of torque at 200 horsepower. That's and cool. it does a quarter mile in 19.1 in a quarter mile, I believe it is. Yeah, roughly that, yeah. It's up there. Anyways, and you know I love the style of these cars. Look, a lot of chrome, a lot of moldings. And of course, Manny, 1977 Lincoln Continental Mark V. This isn't necessarily the best year that they had. And okay. not, not for any other reason, but uh, remember, we were going into the years of malaise, right? Oh, of course. With, with, you know. uh, in 77, we were full into it. The cars were more into, you know, like opulence. They, they gave lots of chrome, lots of flash, lots of cushiness, you know, and it had the 460 once upon a time, but by 77, they went to the 400. Okay. Now, the 400 was a really good low-end motor. It, it had a lot of low-end torque. It, uh, you know, it was replacing the 390 back in the day. So it came out in the late 60s and was in until like mid 70s or so. It produces, you know, it's like a good thumping, like 300, 330, I'm going to say, pound-feet of torque. About 170 some odd, 76 I think, horsepower. Okay. But it was good to pull these tanks around. Okay. But one special note about this car though, they gave it a little bit of something. You had Lee Iacocca, and everybody knows Lee Iacocca, both Chrysler and Ford. Right? Yeah, he was Chrysler and Ford. This little puppy right here. Yeah, that, it reminds me of a British car. Which one? Rolls Royce. There you go. He said, you know, take a Thunderbird, put a big Rolls Royce uh, grill on it, and call it a Continental. And that's more or less what they did. And I mean, this is really the focal point of these cars. The big grill, stares at you. You got your aerodynamics on the Chrysler, but you got the big Rolls Royce grill on the Lincoln. Maybe you probably got the same idea with this one too. Well, look, it, it looks more like the Aeroform, right? It's center. And, and it's got its nice little emblem I up there. And I love these flexible emblems, look at this. Uh, you know what, it's you great. You go through a car wash and they bend over and you Yeah, have, and they don't break off. This. The same with this. Yeah. And you know, for this, and here we are in uh, 2023, we've got a 76 here, we've got a 77, and these cars are in pretty good shape for what I could, I see. Absolutely. And they had a lot of options on them. Like, you know, I, I'm looking at this one, four-wheel disc brakes, okay. ABS brakes in the back. You know, yeah, it had posi ABS. options. ABS. The rear wheels. Yeah. Or uh, 77. Actually, you know, funny note. Chrysler, the Chrysler. Well, in the Chrysler division, the Imperial had that since 1971. That's right. It had an option of the ABS brakes also. You know, and we think it's new. And, back, and then in the late, when the uh, Imperial stopped making production in 75, 76, 76 I should say. Yeah, I think. You know, that would have been the next car higher than this one. But then again, Chrysler New Yorker took over in 76. And uh, it has an option four wheel disc then. Yeah. And of course, what happened in the mid 70s or early 70s, you know, the gas crunch came out. That's the emissions, right. the companies That's had to right. figure out emissions, horsepower, torque ratings went down, compression yeah. ratio went down. Manufacturing was an issue because, you know, we had you know, issues with the unions and with safety concerns and what have you. So the cars got bigger, they got heavier, they got more complicated. Now, 
we can compare them on a few basic, you know, like, yeah, they're not exactly the same, but they're close enough that we could say, hey, let's compare them up against, let's say, five basic points. And then they came out also in the 73, 70, 40 big bumpers at five mile per hour, bumpers that used that's the right. Oh, they're all supported area. by shock absorbers. It's crush area. It is. Same with this. See? They have a gap here so that they go in and out. That's right. In case you hit something. You know what? Nice designs. Let's see how they do. The five elements that Nick and Manny will take into account as they judge these disco era land yachts will be style, build quality, comfort, performance, and ease of servicing. What is this, a 940? Oh. Ah, just about. You can make a small Honda from this thing. Can, eh? It should be right around there. There you go. There it is. See with the 400? You can actually do spark plugs on this side fairly easily. Okay. You could service your your um, carburetor, like ignition. Also. Yeah, well, that's the one thing. One thing I do love about Chrysler and Ford, distributors up front. Yeah, that's a good one, especially on the big block on the Mopars. Uh, on this know, side. Even though uh, it is a V8, it's such a big engine bay, it still looks packed. One thing you could do though, on a Ford that's not as easy on that Chrysler, check out, C6 transmission. Okay. You unbolt it, move it forward, straight up. So all you have to do really is take off the hood and you're good to go. And I see you don't even have a vacuum booster. No sir, Hydro Boost. Hydro Boost. So if so you put a big cam in this one, I have no vacuum issues. So you could run all the AC controls, no problem. If ever there's a leak, not a problem. The okay. power steering keeps with you. The brakes keep with you. Everything's good. And the Tronic ignition also. Yep, yep, absolutely. And it's got, a, I believe, a Harrison AC compressor. It looks like it. And it's with the Motorcraft on it. That's the same design as the Harrison from General Motors, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, I think more or less everybody ran the same thing when it came to their high-end uh, vehicles. Matter of fact, Wolves Royce had a GM uh, they'll call That's correct. Harrison AC uh, yeah. compressor also. Listen, it worked great. Why would you change? Of course. And this is a two-barrel version. It is. Okay. And it's a two-barrel carb. Uh, the 400s weren't known for a lot of power. They were low-end torque, so they used them for trucks. They used them for cars. Uh, it's an inch taller than a Cleveland. It's based on the same structure, so the, the platform itself is like a Cleveland. The heads are. They're the 2V heads, basically. And it's one inch taller, so you've got a four-inch stroke, four-inch bore, uh, three-inch mains. A nice stout engine so, so this, it could pull. So this was a common engine then? Very common for trucks and larger cars. My dad actually had it in 74 on his Merc. Okay, 400. Ran great. And you know, you got the hideaway headlights just like a New Yorker. That's right, that's right. Got the grill in the center, all chrome. Yeah. But one thing that the Lincoln does have that only the Imperials I've seen with, Okay. Uh, cornering lights. Yes, they still had it, but not on this one. Yeah, so when you turn your lights on at yes. night yes. and you put your flasher on, it lights, up, it lights up the street so you can see where you're turning. That's right. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice it's feature a nice, to have. It's a nice uh, thing to have, yes. And other things that I've seen is it's got a what we call a magic eye to sense right here. When you open it, there's a sensor, so when there's oncoming traffic, okay. it'll automatically dim your headlights. Dims down if you had a high beams. Exactly. Okay. So these are little things that, you know, it had that were really, really cool to have. Okay. All right. Let's take a look underneath the Chrysler New Yorker. Sounds good. There it is. The full Ford. It is a very common engine with the uh, Chrysler. They've used them in many, many different vehicles. They have it. They had them in motorhomes. They had them in muscle cars, cruisers, New Yorkers, Imperials, you name it. Okay. We don't have a hydraulic boost. No, uh, standard vacuum. That's a vacuum operated, yeah. so uh, I mean, the compressor is all 100% Chrysler, as you can see. And this is a four barrel version, but there is no two barrel versions up a 440. What? There was a six pack, six to nine to 72. Okay. But in this era, 76, it was just a common 440. So it was a, it was a nice common engine. Four barrel gave you some, some kick. Yes. And you know what? It's a little more set back. It is. It's a tight, it's a tight fit. I've yeah. removed a couple of edges like this in these kind of cars. And it is. And you can see all the emissions on it. Look at this. All plumbing, just like your uh, Mark V there. That's right. And it's got the heavy duty alternator. You know, I'm used to the uh, Chrysler muscle car. That's right. Alternator. That's right. This is also a humongous model. It's huge. It is. Look at that thing. But again, you have power windows front and rear on this, power seats, I believe. It's uh, everything's power. Hideaway headlights. Yes. Vacuum like activated, I believe. But yes. 
It's it's a really nice setup for a vehicle. These are electric on this one. Are they? I oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the motor. Yes. There you go. Just, I'll give you one Just thing. like a 70 Charger. On this thing, having the power, uh, having a motor, an electric motor open the lights, open the covers, it's a lot uh, safer than I find the vacuum. The vacuum default into the open, but it's a more complicated system because you have to switch that controls the vacuum. And as they age, you get uh, crud that builds up inside the vacuum system. So it's actually the way to go. Yeah, yeah, that I'll give you because it's. Gotta I, give I've that to Chrysler. I've had to fix. I've had to fix Lincoln's in the past, and it's it's not yeah. a lot of fun. And I've always loved the flash this year. Yeah, always loved that. Hop caps. This okay. is not one of my favorites. That's for sure. Anyways, no. this car came back from the factory with white walls. White I walls. believe I don't know if there were thin white whites. White there it came white walls. So. That's on the list to get done right here. Okay. And that's, it's also here for a cooling leak, which we're going to get to it this week. All right. But the hubcaps don't turn me on at all. They're really, really plain. Okay. But I love the ones on the mark. Got to love those rims. Those are beautiful. Come on. Even yeah. even the center caps, which come off, yeah, that expose the, the wheels. And you know, white walls were very popular then. That's right. Factory issued with white walls. You have a cap here that comes off to expose the, uh, the lug nuts. That's right. Four-wheel disc brake, by the way. Four-wheel disc. Four-wheel disc. I got front disc brakes on this one. Yeah, I got them in the back too. <laughs> <laughs> and what are these? They let the heat out of the engine compartment? Uh, you know what? They, these are just for looks, but back in the day, they used to have them. If you think back to the 30s and 40s, they had them. They're good. Uh, they're, they're pretty to look at, but I wish they were functional because with these engines up front, they're building up a lot of heat. And so much molding, like this one. Walker body mode. side, yeah. Well, this one has no walker mold. No, but they did have at and one point chrome all the way underneath. Okay. That's an body side moldings, yeah. Uh, different models. This one's a Cartier, by the way. It's a oh, designer yeah. car. Yeah. Okay. Because Ford, what they did is in the in the seventies, um, mid seventies, they started having different designers do different luxury touches to the interiors. This happens to be a Cartier edition. But they had a Bill Blast. They had uh, various other designers that uh, that also did variations on the interiors. Watch the interior. Check this out. Beautiful. Two door. Hey, hey. When's the last time you saw one of these? Look at that. You, one today, in the back. One in the front. You know that that era, everybody was a smoker. That's right. And every car practically came with an ashtray and a light on every door. You know that would come in handy today with everybody's phones needing oh, a charging yeah, port. I yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Matter of fact, but I'm going to check those. I'm sure this one has asterisks on the doors too. I mean, lots of room, lots see, of room. See, that tilts forward, you go in, all's good. You know, when they built these cars back then, they were thinking of space. Yeah. Lots of space with the big V8s and of course the cruise around. Uh, I can imagine what they do on the highway. They must be really nice. They Smooth. run like a... Uh, like a cushion of air. Cushion of air. You know, like you take you take my, uh, my wife's Mercedes. You go over on the road with a crack like this, you feel it. Yes. On these two cars, when you drive over the road and you're in a crack like this, you don't feel nothing. And look at the tires, they're very high, tall profile. That's right. So it absorbs some of the energy as well. I mean, of course. It fit and finish, considering, I think it's a beautiful considering the age of the car, it is. It's it's still in great shape. Now, you know? come and see the interior of my Chrysler. Let's go check, Let's check out the out. Chrysler. Now, this one here is a bone material. Look how much it is. And I'm sure this one has asteroids also. Let's open up a back door and take a look. But this this is what I freak out of the new generation when they open up uh, these older cars. Yes. And they find an asteroid on every door. And this one too, I believe, is equipped with a lighter, just like that. Absolutely. Now, if you didn't have that in a luxury car, it is not a luxury car. That is for sure. Look at look at that. You can fit four people in here easily. Okay, not four big guys, but the four average person you can fit them in here. Absolutely. Oh look, grab handles. When's the last time you saw straps like that? Very rare. Get buddy. in and get out. Yeah. No, uh, hey, what no like pillar. No pillar. Like when you drop all the windows down, you got nothing here That's except right. for the seat belt, of course. That's right. And moldings like here, moldings there. Yeah, moldings on the rocker. That's right. Moldings up on the upper side of the door. Final lot of stuff. You've even got uh, skirts. Skirts on it. Yes. Yeah, oh, that, was a, that was a thing with the Imperials and the uh, Chryslers even the Lincoln, Cadillac. Even, even the, the Lincoln. Lincoln they, the Lincolns at some point not, did have them, not but the not Mark these. Line. No, 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 they didn't. But uh, they did at one point put skirts on them, but it was more a Mercury thing. Mercury loved their skirts. 
If you don't, if I wish I had an Imperial, but we did have one last year. Oh, it was a 69, had quite a few options on it. We also don't have a Cadillac. I We're just comparing them. These would have been, at the time, comparable. That would have been the more cost-effective version at about 6,000? This was roughly uh, $6,000. Okay, this one's like 11. One. 11 grand. 11,000? Yeah. A year later, yep. from a 76, okay, price of a New Yorker, this was almost $6,000 and that was the 11. Yeah. Wow, almost double the price. Exactly. So, yes, Mike, what do you say? We go for a ride with one of these? I think we should take both. Okay, we'll one start with one. And then let's flip to the other. Let's start with the Chrysler and show you how smooth this Sounds thing is. Good. Sounds good. What do good. you say? Let's go. Let's go. Hop in. We'll start with the Chrysler in New Yorker. Absolutely. Mopa. And then we could do hot rod. Course, you know what I always loved? Is the armrest. I was going to say the seat belt. Yeah, but okay. okay, never buy a car without an armrest. <laughs> well, that's there. I this like is what you're wanting, eh? Yeah. Got the seat belts already done. Oh, yeah. White one out. We got a clock over there. It's... You know the uh, digital... Uh, Dashes. Clocks yeah. they have? You know, it's not like you can't read it. No, you can't. But uh, an analog, you can. Yeah, look at this. Okay, the time's not correct because we have the battery disconnected. Ah, but let's, let's go see what All right, here we go. Did we actually come off of the sidewalk there? Yes, you did. I didn't feel it. Yes, we did. And you know what? Look how smooth it is. Look. Oh, anchors away, my friend. Yeah. I could take a long piece with this. Oh, man. Imagine back in the day. And this is your living room couch. It is. Look how big it is. So smooth, so Ooh, comfortable. This, there's two armrests. I get my I own. Know, you get your own. Hey, the turning radius is pretty good on this thing. It is. Not bad at all, eh? Yeah. How about the headlights? Do you want? Headlights. Oh yeah? That's yeah. true. Okay. And they work electronically. Yeah, that's good too. It's you know what? It's more durable. Yes, yes it is. Nice. Look how quiet it is. Yeah, this thing floats. You don't you don't actually It floats. Yeah, it you don't floats. drive it, you float it. Yeah. I love the hood ornament. Oh man, let me tell you. You know, you drive my Hellcat, you got nothing like that. Nope. Not even close. Well, all the cars today don't have these ornaments on the hood. No, and you know what they say, ah, it costs too much, but you know what? It's nice to see. And this is not a car you kick, this is your cruise. That's right. It's the line of the luxury cars. Yeah. Luxury liner. You no, know, this is a beautiful car for the mid-70s, you gotta admit. Nick, you know what? It's got some nice styling. It's nice. even got an A-track. It does. So and, smooth. And the markers for the, uh, the flashers. Flashers, yes. Those are, they, you know, Chrysler did a really nice job with those things. They Putting should. them on the fender so you could tell if your flashers are on or off or whatever. Really nice option to have. And it's got a lot of trunk space. If you look in the back, you could put four people in the back. That's right. I don't know why you would. You could, I mean, yeah. you've got plenty of room inside the car to put them. I don't know why you want to put them in the trunk. We could put Nico's MG in the back. Oh yeah, yeah. instead of a spare tire. Not even money spare tire, we'll have a spare car. That's right. Now, look at this. So and quiet. And you know what, it even handles well. You come around the corner, it doesn't lean too far. That's a nice piece of art. Porsche bar suspension. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a good option. It is smooth, isn't it? Oh yeah. And it's got gauges. You know, it's everybody. got the alternator gauge, it's got the temperature gauge. A lot of luxury cars don't have that, they have lights. No, they don't, they have This lights. is pretty good. And lights are good, but you know what, especially with temperature, on a model like this, you know, if you are if you tow a trailer or what have you, because that's what they did with a lot of them. Of course. You want to know what your temperature's at. Of course, and look at this, a light in the front too. I got one here this, too, look at that. That's for you, this was for the driver. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. No overdrive transmission. It's just a three speed. Three speed, 727 awesome. torque flight. That's a nice trainer to have. I see your mirror remote is right That's a right hand side remote for nice. the mirror. Of course, they all have the day. This goes up here. Yeah. Day night rear view mirror. Yeah, you need that. And look at that, padded doors, eh? Yeah, this car, you know, on, on, a, on a highway cruise with yeah. the windows shut at night. It's a beautiful, quiet ride. Well, we got the windows down and it's so so quiet. You it barely is. hear a murmur from the motor. No, nothing at all. Look at yeah, look. 
for the horsepower. It's not bad. It's a cruiser. Uh, that's you don't need. It. This isn't a racer. Like we said, this is a luxury line. It's a beautiful car. You know, I could take this for a long range drive. Oh yeah. Come on, package. Let's put this puppy away. You don't feel anything. Look how smooth it is. And it's quiet. It's yep. a single exhaust, you know that, eh? It doesn't need dual exhaust. It's got it's air nice. conditioning. It's all good. Okay, my turn. Okay. We're gonna let Manny drive a big bro, small part with a big question car. Ah! Okay, Manny. This is oh, feeling good right now. Let's go. Let's go check out this Mopar. For once, Mopar and no car. That's what the, that's what people say, Nick. Ah, uh, that's when you drive a Mopar. All right, take it out for a ride. Let me get this sucker going. This is a beautiful ride. Let me. Did you pull up the anchors? Yeah, pull them <laughs> up. This is a yacht. Oh my God! Look at this thing. Steering is beautiful on this. Who's wrong with it, buddy? You're gonna love it. Pulls out nice and even. So smooth. And you know, I kind of miss steering like this. Simple. Nice and easy. Just goes smoothly along. No stress. I bet, I bet she's got the horn of a, a yacht. Hold on. There we oh, go. Yeah. I will tell you once all good. The uh, the Lincolns apparently came with multi to multi uh, tone horns. Okay. Like three or four tones, so they sounded like battleships coming in. <laughs> Look at this thing. And you can fit another guy in the middle. Uh, or more. No, three and three, six pack. Six Easily. people. Easily. You can't. Look at this. So thing. easy. Probably getting a kick down out of it. Not bad. You know what, Nick? For a heavy car, what more do you want? It's enough power to pass. Perfect. That's perfect. You know, and look, nice braking, nice and smooth. But the one thing I do appreciate from this thing is this right here. You come to a full stop. You can even you pull a U-turn. No sweat. Nice smooth steering for a big car, not bad at all. And look at the lean, hardly any. That's right. You got to be fast on the recovery. And it gets up to speed like a champ. It's no smooth, that's just all. Yeah, it's uh, it's a nice car. I can't uh, I can't argue. I love it. I can't wait to try the Mark V. We say we go try it. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's go. Right here. Perfect. All right. Now I'm curious how the other one compares. Come on, Nick. Let's step into some Ford-based luxury. Let's have the owners of driving one of these. Absolutely. Well, I'll let you start with it. Sounds good. Give me a description of this car. All right. And this is how smooth and quiet this one is. Oh, man. Look at this thing. Oh. Holy moly. Five miles of door. A long door, let me tell you. It, it took me two attempts just to catch it. I know. And then again, you know, it's a two door versus a four door. Yeah. Nice for New Yorker. Oh. oh, it's got individual armrests also. Yes, it does. Okay, let's take a drive. My God, it's a nine foot hood, at least. Okay. Oh, it's a 20 foot car. You need at least that much. All right, let's see how she'll do. Okay, and remember everybody, these cars came in because they needed a little bit of love. So, if they don't idle or run perfectly, please oh, this, yeah, this one, them. Yeah, this one came in for a tune-up. Plus, it came for a tune-up and a cooling leak. That's right. Look at this thing. Here's you some of that. Yeah, you know, this one has an A-Track also. It does. I guess A-Tracks will come in those years. Yeah, uh, Nick, you know what? Top-end cars, yep. they had the uh, sound systems. and. They had, uh, you know, multiplex sound systems. It's smooth, eh? Yeah. And it's got a four-wheel disc. And not that I'm going to try it, but it does 
apparently have uh, rear ABS. Okay. Let's try the U-turn. I could do it. Look at that. No sweat. Oh yeah. Okay, for a big Go car, ahead. hit it. This is equipped with gauges also? Yes. Uh, the only thing I see on here is uh, fuel. Okay. Let's try the headlights. Go ahead. Or five. <laughs> Oh, uh, you gotta love this thing, look. And why is it the uh, New Yorker? More or less. Advantage to the Chrysler though, because of that torsion front suspension. Yeah, this is coil. Yeah, it's coils coil spring. front and rear. I think it has a perimeter frame, so it's not quite as advanced as the Chrysler. But then again, you know, it's like they were looking for opulence. For, you know, I still find it's a smooth ride. It's a very smooth ride. I like it. What do you think, Nick? about the Fords. Well, you know what? Are they lovable? I've been into a lot of big Chrysler luxury cars. Yes. Imperials, New Yorkers, Newport. Oh, yeah. But this one, this is good. It's a true it's okay, okay, but it's so smooth. You know, for what they built back then during yeah. this era, uh, how's the kick down on this? Not bad. Got a horse spot that I have? Yeah, it wasn't the horsepower, Nick. It was the torque. torque. And what was the torque? This thing numbers? was about uh, 330 pound feet of torque. 330? Yep. You want to try it? Versus the 310 on the. Uh, That's right. But okay. you have more horsepower. You have about 200 on that. All right. This is the 170 some odd on this. Okay. 74, 76. So take it up the street, come back down, and I'll take it for a drive. So I want to drive it. I've never driven a much fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's still healthy. And does it have an overdrive? No, sir. It's only a three-speed. Okay. But it is like, like with the Chrysler. It's a 747. Their top flight transmission. No, seven, 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 seven twenty-seven. Yeah. Top and this flight. This is what a C6. C6 Ford okay. top flight. So seven twenty-seven versus a C6. They're both, both good. Both of them almost indestructible. Right, that's right. So I'm gonna pull in. Okay. And you could try your hand at the Ford. All right. But man, this 400 brings back some memories. Okay, lots of low-end torque. All right. Let me try this thing. You think it needs a wheel alignment? Uh, you know oh, what? We'll do it right here. We'll do it right here. I'm just gonna pull it. Okay. Give you a shot at the... Because the door's so big, yes. I'm gonna give you a shot at actually closing it in one hit. Okay, you know, <laughs> these are long doors. <laughs> because you need a two-hand pull. They weigh quite a bit, don't they? <laughs> All right, let's go. Now it's my turn to get the front drive. Let me try this. Okay, here we go. What are these new corner glass? Uh, opera, opera lights, opera windows. Okay, some black spots. Opera windows. Does that have power seats? It does, you should have them, I think, on the Oh, there they are. Here. Okay, all done. All right. Yes, sir. Look at this thing. Okay, here we go. Oh, all set. Let me grab my seatbelt, and we're good to go, Nick. Here we go. Let's go kick it. And you know what? Yes, sir. The owner of this car is going to be quite happy because I think it's not that bad. The problem that uh, that I'm feeling. No. So if we can fix the ignition, I think it'll be good. Let's go. Well, we wanted to try it before we do it. Yeah, that's what we need. Look at that. Okay, those extra few pound feet of torque do help. <laughs> it's got a lot of seating capacity yeah. here. You can put six people in this car also. Oh yeah. And if you notice, there's only a temperature gauge, a fuel gauge, I think. The rest are all lights. All lights. All there, you can see right on top of the uh, dash. Yeah. But your mirror, it's closer to you for, con for controlling the right side mirror. See, it's right by your kneecap. It's got a hundred mile per hour speedometer also. Oh, 90. Yep. 110 something like that but 180 kilometers 180 in kilometers and 100 and it's got another line under 100 could be 110 miles an hour that's right okay let's go look at this thing i love the clock just like it. and of course the ornament on the hood uh, it's it's it's, it's that is though. one long hood it is you can see it i would mm -hmm. never want to have body work on that sucker i got it along it is yep it's like a conference table I, you know, if you had to do a paint job on this car, I think you'd have to actually do it with the ladder or remove the hood to do it. That's true, I guess. Yeah. Gotta love them. You gotta love it. It goes good, smooth, accelerates well, it's super quiet. Yeah, uh, there's one thing that they do do well, and that's quiet. You know, I'm sure they weren't the best in gas mileage, but that wasn't the, the point back I then. I know. 
Look at this thing. Everyone's nice. I like it. I really do. So they're, they are comparable. They're close. Even for, though... For a Ford, it's good. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Oh, man. Yeah, this is what they call the Mercury Lincoln Division. Well, it's top of the line, uh, the Mark V. Actually, it does ride nice. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. All right. Now let's go inside and see how they compare. Okay, let's go. Beautiful car. Beautiful. Watch that hood. My God, it's a <laughs> long. Wow. This is pretty long, but this one is long. So after driving both cars, they're both great. I kind of find this one has a better handling. Maybe because of the torsion bars? You know what? Or, but then again, you know, these are old vehicles. Have they been uh, maintained with the suspension? I don't know. This is a cold spring suspension. They both have the flip top headlights. Yep. But you know what? I love them both. And for the price tag of what? 11 grand? Yep. Versus $6,000? That's right. And within a year difference? But this is a great car. It is. The guys enjoyed their rides in both of the luxury land yachts. But today, there can be only one champion. It's time to score these Malays classics. So before we get into giving them our marks, remember the New Yorker really compares against the Mercury. That's right. And the Lincoln really compares against an Imperial. Okay. So if we go pound for pound. That's right. The Mercury would have had also the skirts. It wouldn't have all the luxury features of the Lincoln. It would have had most of them. And the Imperial would have had more than what the New Yorker has to match up against the Lincoln. And of course, right? a bigger price tag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but what you know, what we've got here on our hands, we've got two luxury cars. Right. One's a '76, the Ford is a '77. But you know, we're just going to take notes comparing these two units. Yeah. You know, that's what we've got on our, on our hands right now. That's right. You know, and uh, they came in for some repairs, and we're just going to, like we did, we took uh, some road tests. You drove mine, I drove yours, I drove both. As you say, you yeah. did also, and you know. Now we're gonna give our score chart. Sounds good, Nick. Okay. So let's let's fill out the numbers and then right, we'll, uh, we we'll compare. We're gonna start with style. Remember, we asked the guys to score on five different categories: style, build quality, comfort, performance, and ease of servicing, each with a possible score of one to five. All right, let's go into style. Okay. You know, looking at both. I find that the Mark V has a sportier look. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the the Mark of five for the Mark V. Okay. Just because, for the time, it in my opinion, that Rolls Royce grill. Yes. Thank you, the Iacocca, was uh, was actually the bomb. It's like there was no other car that compared to it. All right. So it gets top marks, but the New Yorker I'll give it a four. Why? That Airstream looking grill that it has in the front the swooping lines, the skirts in the back. You, I can only take that one point off of it. It's okay. just... Well, <laughs> I agree with you because I do love the uh, the long hood on the uh, Mark V. I also love the uh, turning signals in the front and it's got a sharper looking grille. So I gave it a better mark than the uh, Chrysler. Okay. And just to tell you what I got in style, instead of out of five, I gave a four to the Mark V. Okay. And because the, Mark, the Chrysler, well, more like a square car, I gave it a three. Wow. And of course, for uh, just to talk about style, both interiors, I call them both vehicle, and I find them yes. both luxury. They got the armrests, they got That's the right. ashtrays, I got the full dash, they both have H tracks, AM, That's FM, right. stereos. So the interiors are given both a four. Yeah, the, the interior is good. The only reason I would have given the interior, again, full marks, it's a Cartier. Oh, yeah. It's a Cartier. It's a Cartier. Interior. That's why I love it's the worn, interior. On that. It's worn, but it's it's still a Cartier. And they both have ashtrays and, and, and uh, lighters on both cars right. with the, on the doors. That's right. Which so. is super. Well, for the time, you know what? Today, today you don't see that. No, today you'd be you'd have USB ports in the back. Well, you know, if you have a lighter plug, you could use a USB port in the back now. That so is correct. Still useful. So that's for the styling. That's right. Build quality. That's right. Well, I know both structures of these cars. Okay, and I know Ford's been building Fords for many, many years. So has Chrysler. I gave them both a four. I gave them both equal. Because I've been working with Chrysler and Fords. But I give a little head start. I mean, I give a little bit more credit to the torsion bar. Okay. But then again, this one also has a smooth ride. Yep. And it also got the dish brakes in the rear. 
with the ABS, which is a great uh, feature. So I give them both a four. Okay. I give them both a five. Okay. Why? Because I love both cars. They are comfortable. <laughs> I couldn't take anything away from them. There's no rattles. No, there's rattles. no squeaks. The only, you know, the only issue would be maybe a little tune-up, but the rest of it is quiet. It's smooth. And they're and they're both here for a tune-up. Yeah. So you know what? Build quality. Doors don't sag. Nothing. They don't creak. You open and close like the day that they were they were brought in. Yeah, the linkage doors are a little heavier. But they're heavier. They're so two is, doors. So is the uh, New Yorker. Car. But if you look, the fit and finish, it's still yeah, the way it came out of the they're factory. So I gave them four. I'm not as critical as you, Nick. I, I gave them a full five. Okay, I gave them both a four, and both interiors are clean, and they both have both have yep. the original headliners yep. and seat uh, yep. covers. And they're not sagging. No, they're not. Nothing sagging. Perfect. And you know, sometimes when you close the door, you see the uh, panels come loose or something like that. That's right. And all the chrome and all the details still intact on both cars. Agreed. All okay. right. So what's next? Next, we got comfort. Yeah. Oh. I got to make a correction here. Though. Okay, what do you want to say? I, I I was cheating. I gave the Lincoln an extra point in, uh, in comfort, but I really got to take it away because what you mentioned makes a huge difference. That torsion suspension, the unibody frame, yes. it actually makes the car ride better. Well, let me give you. I, I, I gotta me, give it. So I'm gonna change numbers. one of my marks because I, it's like. Mm. Okay, would you, I gave Chrysler the New Yorker a five, and uh, Mark five, I gave it a four. Okay, I went Still four. Pretty good. Three. I went four for the New Yorker because it was actually smooth coming down the straights. When I drove it, it was right on the money. The difference was with the for comfort, the Lincoln, even though it's Hydro Boost brakes. The steering itself felt notchy, almost as if maybe the power steering is... is and it works up the same pump. It does. Okay. But it just wasn't responding. Now, is it because of the tune? I don't know. But there was a little bit of notchiness, so I, I had to take it off. And you reminded me of that when I when you were mentioning the interior. I go, yeah, it was, it I was find, a little off. Yes, I found both very smooth, but I give a little edge to the question, New Yorker. And the Lincoln didn't wear as well. The interior of the New Yorker looks to be in better shape, so wow. I'm like... Yeah, it can be. I believe this one has more mileage. Yeah, and it, you know what? It, it's a it's a designer interior, so it should have held Cartier. Up. It should have held up. Should've. So I had to take a little bit away from it. But then again, don't forget, it's a used car. Who knows yeah. the, the occupants no, or people that had it, but you know whether what? you're rough or not. We're not, we're just judging them on what we see. We don't okay. know the history. And again, they're not exact comparisons, but they're close enough that we can actually have a discussion about it. Of course. All right. Now. Performance. Performance wise. Well, if you want my opinion, they're both emission controlled yeah. engines, and I gave them both a three. <laughs> I gave them both a three. You know, I'm used to performance at both sides, Ford and Chrysler products, but you know, with such low horsepower, low torque readings, big heavy cars, right, filled with emissions, mm -hmm. what more can you ask for? Power was there for what they were, yep. like cruising. Like this one here will do uh, the quarter mile in 13.9 seconds, did I say? About that, yeah. Okay. And what was this one here on the uh, Ford? Just a little less. And they're both 4,800 <laughs> pound cars. They are. They so are. you figure if the car's heavier, you need a more torquey, That's more right. horsepower engine. And I give it to the Lincoln because the Lincoln has just a little bit more low end torque than the 440. Okay. So, and I, I'm, about what, 10, I'm biased. About what, pounds? Yeah, about that. It's, okay. uh, what, it's uh, 330, 329, something like that, to about just under 300. So, it has a slight advantage, but I'm sorry, Nick, it's, I grew up with a 400, buddy. <laughs> I know you have the 440. And we got a two barrel here, and two we got barrel. a four barrel there. And the four barrel, I thought, would have given me a little bit more, you know, when you had more top end. Yeah, maybe. Well, That's we know right. we haven't gone up down no, the highway and full out. You know what? These poor things, you don't want to be dragging them out onto the highways. No. They're cruisers. I just want to cruise it, you know, like a normal driver. So, like if I was an old person, That's right. an old person, you no, want to cruise the even. car. Just, just what you want. Enjoying it, a long drive. You're not going to be like flat out on these things. You're just going to take it easy. I give it a five. Though. I give the, it a five. I've got a five. <laughs> and the New Yorker got a four. Cars. Anyways, that's my opinion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe, uh, okay, I give them both a three. But if you want to put a little bit of number, four okay. and four, I call them even. Both of them. You know what, Nick? I, I would typically go four and four. They're about the same. But because I'm a Ford guy. <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it. You have your Hellcat. You have your Kowalski. Yes. Let's face it. Yes. You know what horsepower is. I know. You got but six then, cylinders, and man. And this is the era of the emissions. <laughs> Don't forget that. And, yeah. And they yeah. kill the horsepower and torque rays on these vehicles. They any do. manufacturer in that era. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. And uh, ease of servicing. Oh, ease of servicing. That's going to be a good one. Well, I gave them both a four. Yep. Because, you know, when you open up both hoods on both cars, even though you got a big engine bay, they're so equipped with so much emissions. Right. The air conditioning, the uh, the control the units, emissions, uh, and whatever. controls. All of it. Everything. All of it. it you know, like it's the older okay. cars don't have the overflow bottle. Nope. They don't have cruise controls. They don't have air conditioning like some of the cars yep. do, some don't. But it's well packed. Yeah. You know, he's got the big skirts on the wheel wells for the wheels on That's both right. cars. So if you have to do a, a wheel change on this, it's going to be hectic. The Lincoln, the fact that it's got discs in the back, you would think, hey, great, right? Easier to, to service. It's a more complicated system and it's it is. more rare. So you're going to run into trouble there. The uh, Both of them, when you look down into the engine bay trying to do a spark plug change, okay. it's complicated. Let's, look at, the let's, let's, let's say you have to replace the thermostat. Both of them are difficult. Yes. They both have the compressors in the way. That's right. And not only just the compressor, you gotta maneuver a few stuff out of the way just to get the thermostat. But the, but, good, but the good thing, one good thing about these engines, both of them, distributors in the front. Yes, so easy access. Easy access. So if you do ever have a problem with a distributor, you need to change a If you wanna do a cap. a cap and rotor change or whatever, it's, it's all there in the front. Yeah. That's so, why I gave them both a four. And I did as well. Okay. Four, four seemed about reasonable because, you know, they are a little hard to get to, but not impossible. So I got 21 and 22, giving the Lincoln the advantage. Oh, my one point. Yeah, man. these Ford guys cheat, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this shows he's a Ford man. You know, like it's I said. It's a Mark 5. How could I not give it a you know, five? Bought a Mini Ford when it's taking a long trip, I'd take either car. Either yeah. car would be very comfortable yeah. to drive. I agree. We're going to pick a better day to make a road test. I want to thank you guys for joining us for rides on these two luxury cars. And I just wanted to say thanks for watching us on Nick's Garage. And Manuel, what do you got to say? Well, first of all, don't forget to like and subscribe. Second, for the price tag, what these cars sold for, I got to give the New Yorker the, the thumbs up because at half the price, you can get two of those for one of these. Okay. All yeah. right. So all that to say, thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Mixed Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.